أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله When Rasulullah stated to his Sahaba that Adinu Nasiha, the deen is to be sincere and true, they said to whom? And his reply was to Allah, his books, his messengers, to the Muslim rulers, and to people in general. Sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that we would not contradict our shahada. We would not contradict our shahada and we will avoid a shirk in all of its forms. Not only ritualistically, but we will also avoid a shirk legislatively. No matter what society is saying that is haram, we will not hold it haram unless we find it haram within the hukum sharia, the address of the legislator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no matter what society holds as mubah, a lawful action, we would not hold it as lawful until we find it lawful within the hukum sharia, which is the address of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be sincere and true, to Allah Ta'ala's book, the Holy Qur'an, is that we will follow what is within this Qur'an. We will take from it what it has as halal and also what is haram. But not only that, we will follow what the Qur'an points to. Meaning the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We will follow what is commanded of our rulers, our righteous rulers, we will follow what is commanded of them, and even for the, those that are not so righteous, we will follow and obey them as long as their order does not contradict the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his book, the Holy Quran, and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sincerity and truthfulness to the Messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah SWT says in the Qur'an, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولًا That to every nation, that barely to every nation, He assuredly sent an apostle or a messenger. To us, we will send Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To the ummah known as the world, Bani Adam, was sent different messengers and prophets. But at the coming of Muhammad وسلم, there was a change and a shift because he will be the only one that is sent. And that it will be our duty as generations and generations hatta yawm until the day of judgment that we will have to follow this sunnah. We will have to follow this sunnah and we will not cloud this sunnah with other sunnah. This is another big issue amongst us being sincere and true to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu Being true to his sunnah is very difficult for us today. Because as Allah ta'ala gives us examples of other prophets and messengers in the Qur'an, we look toward them as examples. Allah ta'ala makes this clear in the Qur'an. But we like to follow their sunnah because we don't find what we like to do or what we want to do. Ritualistically or even politically, the biggest issue the political aspects that we do not find in the Sunnah of Rasulullah will point to uh, Prophet Yusuf The political and, and, and uh, societal matters that we do not find in the Sunnah of Rasulullah we like to point to Prophet Musa So being true and sincere to Allah Taala's Messenger Muhammad Sallam is to indeed find satisfaction and contentment with that Sunnah. And that is the sunnah that will carry us hatta yawm qiyamah as Rasulullah stated that even if Musa salam, was alive during his time he would follow Muhammad sallallahu sunnah. 
Are any of us like Musa alayhi salam? Are any of us on the level of Musa alayhi salam? No, none of us. So if Musa alayhi salam will follow Muhammad alayhi salam, how imperative is it upon us that we do so? And stop being so flexible as to what sunnah we will follow at any given time. This is the second part of our shaharatain. We say shaharatain because we're witnessing twice. We say ashhadu. I am a witness. And this ashhadu is done with a knowledge. It is done with a knowledge. What happened when Rasulullah was asked? He was asked, Ya Rasulullah, can a man be a believer and a thief? Rasulullah said, Nah, yes. He said, Can a man be a believer and a coward? Rasulullah said, Nah, yes. He said, Ya Rasulullah, can a man be a liar and be a believer? Rasulullah said, La, a man cannot be a liar and a believer. So if we're going to say Ashhadu, we are witnesses to something, we better have a knowledge of it. We better make sure we make the da'wah that we are giving people a knowledge of it so they will be truthful and sincere in their shahada. Because we're witnessing today people bearing false witness. So they come people and they bear false witness just to, to earn our trust. SubhanAllah, I am a witness that if they come to the masjid and we give them pure hakimiyah, la ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah, that's fine, they become your brother for real. Because this is the way Allah Ta'ala blesses whoever He wishes, whoever He wills, and it will turn their heart if they're given the correct concept. We are witnessing individuals bearing partial witness. They come in with a heart against faith. They enter with a heart against faith. What do we find? Individuals that are coming in and they're letting you know, I'm going to take this shahada, but I'm not going to do this, and I am not going to do that, and I am not going to do that. We say, don't worry about it. Take your time. I wish you would have told me that when I let my girlfriend go when I took shahada. Why didn't you tell me that then? But today we invent that you can come into Islam piece by piece by piece. And we say, well, Islam was revealed in stages. But yes, when anyone took shahada at any given time, they took it all and had been revealed. They took it all. They never went back and redid it again. It didn't happen. You think that those that took shahada in uh, the latter stages of Medina when drinking was outlawed, you think that they were allowed to drink and to go back through three stages of not drinking? No. They took it all. To enter Islam perfectly and completely, and this is what they did. So this ashadu is intended to be based upon yaqeen, surety. You said, but brother, I give 10 minute shahadas. I give 10 minute shahadas and I cannot explain everything they need to know about aqidah in 10 minutes. I said, okay, we'll take 10 days. And this is not desirable for us as Muslims. We want to give them shahada right then and hope, inshallah, later on they will learn the deen. But I've seen people come in with the incorrect understanding, and I've seen people pass through, like Rasulullah said, like an arrow passes through its game. Sincerity to Muslim rulers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us, He entrusted us with the authority. Yes, we as Muslims, we have the authority to give the bayah to a single individual to rule over us as a mere. We have that authority. And when we give him bayah, we are transferring that authority that we had over to him. That he will rule by the hukum sharia, the address of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This bayah that we entrust them with is not lifelong, but it is indeed conditional. Because we indeed have an authority of correcting. Correcting what? Straightening and correcting what we see that may be crooked within them. As Omar when he was upon the men bar and he, they give him the bayah and he started to cry. And when they asked him why was he crying, he said, Because I fear that if you see some crookedness in me, you will be afraid of me to correct me. And therefore I will go astray. So one old man he rose, he said, Ya Omar, if you see crookedness in you, we will straighten it even with our swords. 